It's Oklahoma and it's February. Good God. I tell you, we had 70 degrees a couple days ago. And uh, I've been trying to help folks at Snake Creek here get rid of some pigs. Had some rifle troubles. Had all kinds of issues. But uh, uh, the bait has been working out. They have taken the bait. Look at this. They plowed it out. They've been hitting the bucket. Look at that. Emptied the bucket. Emptied the bucket, too. And the yeast is the thing. Uh, you got to have live yeast. You can brew this stuff in your garage. I'm going to make it in my little, uh, I'm going to make it in my camp pump house over here this week. And uh, in a couple of days, I'll have it out in the hole. I guarantee you they'll, they'll go for it. The thing is, yeast, once you activate it and once it's liquid, it'll keep going. Even if it gets cold, you put it out here and freeze a little bit. It'll keep working a little bit. Some of that yeast will survive. I've got a video here, the last snowstorm we had, and he went over to the, he went over and dug a hole in the middle of a snowstorm and just sat there and ate. So that says a lot to me for cold weather. And that stuff, that, that feed he was on, was only about three, four days old. I'd brewed it just that week. So uh, it, the stuff works and, uh, and it's cheap. A lantern lighting things. We've got noisy lighting. It's going to cost you about 18 bucks for the ingredients to make 10 gallons of bait. That's a 40 pound bag of corn, two gallons of Hawaiian punch, four things of jello, pick your flavor, strawberry or cherry I usually get, and the most important part, your active dry yeast. You'll see the videos online, people making the pig bait. It's hot. You just throw the yeast in and it's gonna it's gonna take off and work. Well, when it's cold outside, or if you're at camp like I am, and the heat isn't on all day, uh, you gotta liquefy that yeast, but you gotta make sure it's active first. And that just takes a little sugar, and a little water, and a little test, and I'll show you how it works. Too. First, I heat up all the liquids, and get those up to temp, get them in the bucket, and then pour the corn in on top. And my corn is sitting at my feet in front of my heater for a reason, uh, to keep it warm. Keep everything warm, but two, three days, um, the, the corn will swell till the bucket is full, and it's good to go. Start by testing the yeast, and the, and the directions for this are right on the back of the package. A quarter cup of warm water, 100 to 110 degrees, and I'll check the temperature and keep everything kind of right toward that 110 degree temperature as we're making this, so it can cool off as we're going, and about a teaspoon of sugar per packet. So three quarters of a cup of water and three teaspoons of sugar. All right, we're at 109 degrees, perfect. Yeast is messy. I'm gonna, we've got three quarters of a cup of water in here so we can put in all three packets. Make a little yeasty soup. Well, that's showing us that it's alive. We take it over here to the bucket that's got the jello in it. And a little schmutz from the last batch we made. I admit it, it's a dirty bucket. But look at that. <laughs> it's almost, it's foaming toward the top of the container already. And now we can put it in its little 100, that's about 108 degree water in there now. And put all that happy yeast right in there. And I got another gallon of water on the boil here. 108 degrees, perfect. That helps stir things up real nice. Fill it almost about three quarters of the way, seven and a quarter, seven eighths of the way full. And uh, then we top this one off to make it equal. And I'll dump that one in back into the bag. And we'll be ready to go for part two. But I wanted to measure that out so you know. And stir all this in real oil. Heat up another gallon of water. So I fill that bucket up to about a half inch from the top. Dump. So we're just, I mean, about a half inch below the below the edge. It doesn't look that full on this side because the floor is not level at all. <laughs> Give it a good stir. It's still about 85 degrees in that bucket. Put the lid on and leave a gap. It's just not quite sealed on that side, on one edge. Another nice thing about this too is see when I soak this up the deer deer don't want anything to do with it the raccoons eat a little bit of it seems like but everything pretty much leaves it alone except for the pigs so i'm not 
feeding everybody in the neighborhood <laughs> this stuff. And uh, that bucket is key. All this stuff off of YouTube. Other people have done it. Um, I've just never seen anybody do it in the cold weather and to pay attention to that yeast. So they've been sitting here in the cold. It's 20 degrees this morning. I think I've got down as cold as 15. No heat in here or anything. We'll see. I left them cracked. That one's stopped leaking. Yeah, see, still bubbling. And the corn's almost to the top now. It's not as swollen as I'd like to see it, so it's it hasn't without a little warmth. It's uh, it's been slower. Oop! See, there you go. That one's done. That one's that one's ready to go. It's probably there's still water in there. It'll be down lower. Uh, but it's kind of done its job. I got poofy corn, and the water is all used up, and the corn is to the corn corn to the top of the bucket. And then uh, it it did its it did its job. So I'm gonna put this. I'm gonna carry this out in the woods and and put it out for that pig. Yes, he's been he's been coming in. I want to keep him coming in until he's dead.